Yeah, yeah go, let's, let's, we can do the controller first, yeah. Uh, so uh, this is the left controller in the car. So it's 48 volts. Um, this, this is one of the ether loop connections. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna peek at that. That does not look like an ether uh, cable. Uh, it's looks a, a bit standard different. twisted pair shielded really? cable. Yeah. And then this is uh, another one going to the rear controller. And then this right here is the switch tank converter. So that's those 48 to 16 volts and it's bi-directional. So mm -hmm. when I was talking about jump posts, on the jump post, the, the current flows back from a 12 volt battery oh, to see. jump to 48. And then um, one thing that's different is this is mounted on the uh, firewall. And it, so it spans the wet side and the dry side, which is new. We, we haven't done that on the three and Y. So one of the things that can happen is uh, circuits on the wet side can come through and just transit the board and then go back out. And that allows us to remove a whole bunch of grommets that used Good to idea. go through the firewall. Um, what else is cool? Because the current's much lower, the E-fuse e circuits are much smaller. I can't even point to them. They're, they're all like up in here somewhere. Yeah, they're really tiny. Yep. And then um, this is the microcontroller that runs the ether loop. <laughs> really? All by its uh, That's uh, amazing. What's, and what's this chip doing here? Uh, that's another microcontroller that does a lot of the uh, um, PWMs for like controlling window motors and things like that. Mm. Yeah. It looks really compact. Uh, it dense. is. Yeah. Um, well, the, well, the problem that we're facing now is that it's dominated by the connectors. So it, if we could get rid of all these connectors or densify them, that yeah. would be a lot nicer. And we've been using this style of connector for quite a while. So we're just pinch stitching on the module. Yeah. And then we the the connector itself is formed into the cover. So this when you see the um, when you see it in the car, the cover on top of this forms the, the body that the connector actually connects to. Yeah. Um, so we don't really you know buy connectors you know like for example like this yeah. one where the sh has the shield is already yeah. in there. So that that's pretty fun. And then because of the um, because of forty eight volts reducing the current that reduces the loss. So yeah. when you see it in the car, the heat sink is significantly smaller. And, and really the only reason, one of the reasons we have the heat sink is the audio amplifiers are here. Yeah. Um, so yeah. we, we used to have a separate box in the car for the audio amplifiers. And now we've been able to integrate them Just onto the car. Yep. Cool. Th these are still, uh, these are 20, 24 volts. Um, so, but in the future we'll, we'll push that to 48 as well. If you like, one of the things that, uh, that we had, when I was, uh, trying to push this uh, in the 80s. 48 volt, um, I thought was the, I couldn't understand why we're still using 12 volt. Right. And one of the reasons that I wanted to do it was because I could get rid of almost every um, heat sink in any of the, uh, any of the, because it's old fashioned, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and by going to 48, I could get rid of those heat sinks and, oh, they're cheap or, you know, Mass. Everything was, uh, yeah, nobody cared about mass. In those days, it was road-hugging weight. <laughs> really? that was, uh, yeah. that we was, have yeah. enough of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, yeah the, but the I weight. squared R, you reduce the voltage by, uh, you, you increase the voltage by 4X, yeah. reduce the current by 4X, it's 1 16th the heat. Yeah, it's huge. 16th, yeah. No, we like it. Uh, and that's a good idea. I can hardly wait to see who comes in second. It <laughs> it's always seems to me that you guys pave the way and then everybody else becomes an expert and uh, usually the guy that comes in second wall street throws rocks at them as well saying that you know they've done another dumb tesla thing but and that's what happened with um uh what's his name um jim farley when he went to your connector nice. the north american yeah. yeah and um and now everybody's done he looks it. a little smarter now Volkswagen. <laughs> Volkswagen is oh you know yeah, well, they, that domino will fall eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here we are. Yeah, this is uh, you've made you've taken apart a couple of power conversion systems. I know. Yeah. So this is none of them look like that. This is the next generation power co conversion system. We call it the PCS2 at Tesla, where we've gone to everything being, you know, surface mount um, uh, reflow process and no um, uh, whole whole, you know, through hole based parts. Uh, we've the, got these aren't through hole. No. Well, hmm. And, uh, and these are all planar magnetics. Um, so none of these, you know, you, you can almost, they were like, look like they were made by hand, the, the large inductors and chokes that you yeah. saw before. All planar magnetics, leveraging the PCB. You can see the, the traces in the PCB that are part yeah. of the, the circuit there. Um, 
And, uh, and it, we've accomplished a, a doubling of volumetric uh, efficiency from a power density perspective and a 50% increase in gravimetric power density. One of these PCS2s in the truck does 11 and a half kilowatts continuous bi-directional on the charge port. Oh. You can power the house. Okay, so that's the other question I yeah. had. It, yeah. Can I power my house? You can power your house, 11 and a half kilowatts continuous, 110 uh, amps of like inrush current capability yeah. for, you know, you've got your air conditioning units or whatever in the house. We've got uh, four 120 volt outlets and one 240 volt outlet. Uh, the 240 volt outlet is in the bed, so you can just charge another EV right off the back uh, or do whatever you want to do with 240 volts in that. And we've got three kilowatts of 48 volt power all in this object. You've got your four power stages there on the high voltage side, the two power stages on the 48 volt side. So what does it look like if you get the extended range version? Because I know that there's something uh, coming out with extended range, right? What is what what what, what is this? What does the this extra look like? battery pack? Um, yeah, does that we can show you. I mean, it, it basically sits kind of in the bed. Yeah, it looks like a toolbox in the bed. That's what it looks like. Uh. And you can get over 460 miles of range with with that extender. 460 miles. And what would that be? Long-term target is 500. Oh, That's what, right. What about towing and whatnot? If I have an 11,000 pound thing that I'm dragging around, what does that give me? In yeah, I mean, it depends yeah. on the arrow efficiency. It's less the, of the weight thing. and more the arrow, yeah. Yeah, it's like, the, you know, if you pull a horse trailer, it's pretty bad and they take away 50% of your range. But if you pull a ski do or, you know, something a little more aerodynamic, uh, you know, you might be only 20 or 30%. I mean, the, the cool thing about Cybertruck, Franz did a good job on, was that tail really gets with the tunnel and everything yeah. it gets the air flowing fast and the yeah. it makes it taper so we get pretty good straight laminar flow off the back right yeah and as long as that's not getting disrupted by whatever you're towing it's really just the mass you know and also we're system. we're scaling up regenerative braking power based on the mass that we sense inside the vehicle that's so right we're doing our best to recapture as much of that energy as possible so we don't at least waste it on friction brakes but yeah with with the range extender up, up over 460 uh, miles. And obviously if you're somebody that tows a lot, like, I don't know, San Francisco to Tahoe, the range yeah. extender might make sense, but. Well, the average person drives 40 miles yeah. a day. Yeah. I mean, it's that's, like, that's uh, why I, I decided to make it an optional yeah. add-on. And, and I mean, yeah, most people, exactly. you know, you know, 340 miles, 320 miles, which we're going to, what we're going <laughs> to give in the dual and the try, like that, yeah. that's totally fine, like for anybody. And then we want to make more electric vehicles, right? So like, rather than putting more cells yeah. in that no one's ever going to use. Yeah. Well, do you want it? You can buy it. That's the well, same. I, I don't, I don't see the need for at least for me, anyways. Um, if I'm going to go into the woods with something like this, I'll charge up before I take off. And if I decide to lose my mind and, you know, travel some other place that uh, maybe I shouldn't have, um, use the charging network. I uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's it. What one other unique thing that we're doing in the Cybertruck is. We're actually able to natively charge at both 400 volts and 800 volts. So we actually take the battery and split it in half. Really? When we're at a Tesla supercharger station, that's a 400 volt station. So rather than having to go through a boost converter that could be slower and efficient, yeah. we just directly connect the supercharger to the battery terminals, whether it's at 800 volts or 400 volts. And that's all happening with this. It's a dual pole, dual throw uh, reconfigure of the bus. You can kind of see here, the bus is in parallel. There it's in series. And uh, that's that's what's happening in, in our device cluster area of the battery pack where we've got the pyro devices, we've got the, the main switches, and then we have this DPDT, we call it, that configures the bus between a 400 volt mm. bus and the 800 volt bus. Mm. Which does mean that things like the power <clears throat> conversion system, the HVAC compressor and everything else need to be able to work at both voltages, but actually that isn't very complicated when you think about what they are. They're all variable speed drives, yeah. variable frequency drives that have power converters in them already and they're already designed for the higher voltage so they can run at the lower voltage too. Cool.